What's up, nerds? Welcome back to the what's aggressively name? average anglers. That's right. That's YouTube the YouTube channel. Uh, we changed it. It used to be barely fishing. Now it's aggressively <laughs> average anglers, which matches up with our podcast slash live stream that you can catch every single Wednesday at eight p.m. Eastern. And today we're getting aggressively average on the ice. But there is no ice, so we're just talking about it and pretending that we're out there. So if you're lucky enough to have some ice, you're out there ice fishing. Bully for you, friend. Good job. Um, hopefully we'll get a chance this year. And, you know, until then, we're prepping, right? So we, we've gone through some storage videos. We've gone through, like, here's all the gear that we use. We just did a rod and reel extravaganza. So today what we want to do is we want to break down top four Four. Let's get weird. Normally it's a top three or a top five. You sure. know what? Heck that noise. This is aggressively average. We're doing four combos that you should be looking for. You don't have to go with specifically these brands or anything. It's really we want to get into more of like what to look for and then what use we have for it. And so right? I'll explain all the components, right? So like mm -hmm. why do these real seats look like that versus, you know, yep. why do they look like this? Why would I get an inline versus a spinning? Uh, why get a longer rod versus a shorter rod, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So we're going to show you like the reasoning behind why you would make these combo selections mm -hmm. so that you can look at your fishing situation and your waters, how and where you like to fish. You can take this information, go build your own perfect combos, whether it's one, two, three, four, five, six, or 25. You can go out and do that and have confidence that you know I have the right tool for the right situation. All right, so let's start with a super light setup. This one is Paul's, and I just got jealous of it. And I didn't <laughs> care before this. So you just reel it the, the other, other <gasps> Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. Isn't that sick? Oh, I hate it. Isn't that awesome? It's the worst. So this is the OG Black Betty. It's an all-metal frame there. It's super light, though. If you haven't seen the, the naming convention for the Black Bettys, uh, the Black Betty is sort of their upgrade inline uh, system. And mm -hmm. then uh, the Black Betty, the Black Betty Free Fall is probably what you're probably what you're used to seeing, and you will see again here in a second. It's gonna come up in this video. They're, they look totally different. They're more expensive, but this is like the most simple Black Betty that there is. It's With the this cheapest one, one that there is. You reel backwards. Your lure down. What? Yeah. So you reel it backwards, That's and cool. that releases line, and then yeah. the weight pulls this down. Yeah. Then you reel it forwards, and it pulls it up. Uh, it's very, very simplistic. It's all metal components, which I yeah. really, really like. There's this little palm guard right here, uh, which is where, where you're gonna not hit the spool, right? But that's the only protection that there yep. is. Uh, and then there is, this is the most critical component. This is the line guide. Yep. Um, I really, really, it's got a really simple drag. Why would you choose it? This is called an inline setup. That's because the reel is facing the same direction as your line. So mm -hmm. it's in line with your rod tip and your line. The other type of setup that you would like typically run into is a spinning setup, which is just like a conventional spinning combo. Uh, the difference between the two, um, a spinning combo, as you let it go, the spool is perpendicular to the line, and so the line's unraveling down as you release the bale. Um, this is mainly for more deeper water, uh, and it's mainly for you when you want like a much uh, better drag. So larger fish, deeper water, heavier presentations. Just in general rule of thumb, inlines are going to be more for 10, 15 feet of water or less when you're targeting pan fish, not necessarily anything bigger, uh, and then lighter line applications. So that means like two to maybe four pound test just in general. Again, rules of thumb and sort of when you're picking your combos, like I wouldn't grab an inline setup if I'm gonna be like hunting for walleye in 120 feet of water, right? And I wouldn't grab a spinning setup if I could avoid it in like six feet of water for ultralight jigging up like tiny, tiny pan fish with like little baby, baby uh, jigs. <laughs> just in general, again, rules for you to make your own decisions. All right, so talk about this rod that you have this paired up with. So the rod here, it, this one does have a real seat, which I was a little surprised about. This is a 15 inch custom. This is a pretty darn short combo. You're not gonna find a lot of like 10 to 15 inch combos, uh, but this is like super, super sensitive. This is an ultra light. It's about as sensitive as you can get. Uh, it's only got one, two, three, four guides plus the tip here. Uh, really simplistic. It does have, this is like a, this is like a, a cush feature. Uh, you do get the old, uh, um, bait keeper. Bait keeper. Thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> but that's really the only thing you're getting. A lot of times you'll see these with just like really standard grips, so just one piece of cork, mm -hmm. because you really want something super light. And the, the idea is that you're getting the highest amount of sensitivity for the shallow water situations. I'm really looking for perch, bluegill, crappie, that sort of thing. Uh, small fish, small bites, small presentations. I'm not going to put any big baits on here. Nothing complex. This is going to be wax worms. Maybe at the most like a minnow head, and then just a lot of really small plastics as well. 
what I'm going to be hunting with, usually with jigs. That's it. Uh, this is just one of my favorite combos, so I like to catch fish. I think it's a lot of fun, and uh, and it fits the you know into pretty much any situation because it's so darn small. So an ultralight combo, you can go mini like that is a, a great option, and we really like the inlines, especially when you run and gun on the ice like we do, and you're chasing Panties. mostly panfish, right? So we catch a lot of perch, a lot of bluegill, and every once in a while, a big, massive crappie will just come sneaking in there. Hopefully. Hopefully, and then you can fry it up in a hotel room. That's what we do. <laughs> Speaking of inlines though, the next one that I'd highly recommend if you want to invest 75 bucks into it or you just go for this whole combo here would be the free fall, as they call it. This is the ghost edition, right? And that's from 13 Fishing as well. So this is part of that Black Betty lineup. Uh, this has uh, your little tension here on the side, your drop speed right here, and then your drag as a star drag. It does have the nice handle on there that's really comfortable, easy to fish with, even if it gets wet, which everything gets wet when you're ice fishing, if you guys are familiar with that. And then it's got the simple little trigger, right? So I pull that trigger with my finger, whether I'm wearing gloves or not, it's easy to do. And that's just gonna let your jig or your lure drop right on down. Free fall. Get it? There you go. It does, it does here, right here, it does have a line guide. That's a huge yep. thing. I mean, line guides are a big part of ice fishing. Yep. It's gonna determine where, like it's gonna control your line a lot more effectively than uh, a, a reel that doesn't have one. What happens with a lot of these reels if there's no line guide, if it's just spooling off, It'll actually, the, the line will actually come off the, the lip of the reel, and that's how you get your line spooled over itself. And then you basically, if you keep fishing it like that, eventually you will have to re-spool your entire line on the ice. It's the most frustrating thing. Here's an example. This is the 13 Fishing Descent. It does not have a line guide there. And what happens all the time is this little twist, and it comes out the side here. So. This got retired this year. It can be very <laughs> frustrating, but that's the difference between a more expensive uh, uh, inline reel and maybe a cheaper one. Another thing yep. we want to point out is the tickle stick, uh, which is the rod here. This is an it's ultra. It's also an ultra light, but you'll notice this one is 23 inches. Uh, as you go out, your fish fighting power goes up, so you still get the ultra light, right? It's a very very sensitive rod, but it's it's still like longer, right? So I think 20 plus inches, 20 to 26 is probably where most people will want to start. I wouldn't yeah. recommend going to that super short uh, rod if you're just getting started. The reason being, again, you're getting a lot of forgiveness fighting fish with a, with a, with a longer rod because the rod's going to do a lot of the work fighting that fish for you and it allows you to downsize your line without potentially breaking off as much. Also, yep. you can stick your rod tip down into the hole that you're fishing through the ice and you can that fish can swirl around and do whatever it's going to do and your, your rod is still going to be very effective. Again, beginners, I recommend 24 inches probably, 22 to 24 inches where I would recommend you start. Light, ultralight, anything, that's roughly where I would recommend. So this is a little bit longer. This is probably more of my standard go-to for ultralight go pan fishing. Yeah. Uh, the tickle stick, the reason it's called the tickle stick is because of this section here at the front. Starting right here at this guide, this rod actually flattens out. So this is actually flat. It's not it's like crazy. circular shaped here. It's flat. What that is is that's it's meant to enhance sensitivity and sort of change the way that you are experiencing bite detection. You also notice it has a super sensitive section that is outlined in chartreuse here. If I can, the light's really hard to see. But uh, it's in chartreuse. That's helping you see those really, really tiny bites on your ultra tiny line that much better. Hence giving you another advantage in when bluegill are just tippy tapping, mm -hmm. uh, you can actually see when Should that's happening. What you'll see if you actually get a camera underwater, you actually see that you can watch bites happen on the screen, but you can't see them on your rod tip or feel them because right. they are so darn gentle or fast. They're just lightning quick and you're missing a lot of strikes that you don't even know are happening. This is meant to help you with that. So this is a, a really nice yeah. ultralight setup. My personal opinion is something I've learned over maybe the past two or three seasons. I really only like to see these flat, super sensitive, soft tips only in like ultralight and light application. I don't really like them as much in medium and medium light. I feel like they actually take away from the action that you're trying to get on some of those heavier lures, specifically spoons. So I, I really like to see the tickle stick style only in that light ultralight. Yeah, and the cool thing about this too is just that even though you see this, like look, that's completely insane. You can fold this thing entirely over because of that flat tip. It's also insanely strong still. So this will hold up, this will land fish. I've caught two and three pound bass on this. 
This is the one where we went out with Ted. Oh, yeah, I know exactly. And yeah. I hooked into something that was much larger than I should be handling on this yeah. setup. And I freaked out and I lost it, which was my fault. But I definitely could have landed it on this. Yeah. So this will catch, like, you'll just see the tip go, whoops, you made a mistake. Yep. Hang on to your pants, buddy. Hopefully you land this fish. Uh, this will catch some big fish for sure. The other thing, too, and this is something that, again, going back to, like, why I don't like these on the heavier setups. Yep. You actually have a longer point at which you get a good uh, hook set. So when you lift up, it actually takes a longer travel. Like you have to lift the yeah. rod up higher before you Imagine. hit the hook set because that's softening yeah. uh, the blow of your hook set, which is why I like to, I really only like these for the light ultralight. When you got pan fish, they got paper lips. You can just whip. That's good. That's You're great. Good. This is exactly it. what you want. You get into bass, pike, you got to stick them. Walleye. Pike, for sure. So it is nice, and that's why we're going to show you the next two setups sure. to have a stiffer setup. And uh, as Paul was mentioning, I do want to throw it in there, too. Let's say I got, like, a lipless, a blade bait, uh, yep. you know, wally talker, perch talkers. This being paper thin, basically, is going to, like, take away from that action a little bit because you've got to do a lot more you got to be more aggressive to make it happen. Yep. And also, it can Slower. take away from the sensitivity of the bite because the weight of that lure is just holding this down. So it's like, hey, did I get a bite? you got to like watch this tip really closely yeah. to see that. Next up, we're going to go to a medium light. So we started with an ultralight slash light. Now we're going to go to a medium light. Uh, this is probably in my opinion, when it comes to ice fishing, Great Lakes region, and you're not targeting super giant fish, you're targeting sort of like bass, walleye on down, mm -hmm. this is gonna be one of the most flexible uh, rods in your arsenal. So this is a 30 inch medium light, and I think this is a great place for starting, uh, or for someone who's more experienced, you're getting a lot of uh, forgiveness because of the 30 inch length, but getting a lot of fish fighting power. Um, one of the things I love about this setup is that it's just like a straight, uh, composite handle. Uh, this is a very, very sensitive handle and that's why there's no real seat. So a real seat is something like this where you actually screw, uh, it has a place for you to screw in and mount your reel. In this case, we've actually just gone ahead and use electrical tape to uh, attach our reel. They make bands that you can slide on there. They're really hard to get on. They're a little bit more forgiving to get off though and they are very, very sturdy. But you have to pay for them. If you have electrical tape, this is a great way to do it. But this is maintaining all that sensitivity. It's really slim and trim and your hand is touching uh, either, if your grip is like this, like a pistol grip, you're actually touching the rod blank. But even in this situation, if you're just sort of like using your standard, even if you're not fingering the line here, you actually get really great sensitivity with a really hard handle. In general, the general rule of thumb, a carbon or hard plastic handle that's directly connected to the rod is gonna be the most sensitive, but probably the least comfortable. Uh, cork is like one step below that in terms of sensitivity, but still very sensitive, but a lot more comfortable and pretty cheap. And yep. then below that you get foam. It's pretty sensitive, but it's really inexpensive. So you'll find that that's sort of your, again, Rule of thumb, just general rule of thumb, generic guidelines to understanding real seats when you're seeing them. And real seats in general are gonna be a little bit less sensitive than just like a straight handle. Right. Uh, so again, uh, now we're looking at, this is the, I, I always do this ICX, but I call it the Ice X is how I like say we it. We say Ice X. So <laughs> ICX, this is from Akuma. It's a little bit more expensive setup, but it's a wonderful setup. Again, you're getting your, uh, your uh, bait holder there, bait keeper there, which I really like. You're getting nice quality guides. This one gets one, two, three, four, five plus the tip, and wow. then it's got this orange section, which I really like. I think orange is actually the one that, uh, the color that has the most contrast. To snow. Whether it's and snow, <laughs> uh, even when it's really gray out though, it really yeah. pops. Yeah. So chartreuse is good. I think actually orange is probably my favorite though, because it just yeah. offers the most contrast. Cool blue, which, you know, take it or leave it, but the orange I really like, and it has a purpose there at the tip. Mm -hmm. um, and then just a really great constructed reel. Again, this one doesn't have that flat set, that flat tip, so this is gonna be, it's still really effective for jig fishing. A medium light I think is pretty solid for most pan fishing situations. I don't think it's the best, but mm -hmm. it's still pretty good. Uh, but it, this will handle a big walleye, a big pike, um, you know, other than like, giant, you know, like burbot or, yeah. you know, like l lake trout or something like that. This medium yeah. light's gonna do you real good. Uh, the other thing you notice, we have it paired with a spinning setup. Um, you can see the guides here are not directly attached uh, until way later on in the rod length. So the first three are unattached, which means they're a little bit further away from the from the setup. A setup like this, I, sp I typically wanna see a spinning setup because the angle sets it up so that's that's just sort of what it's built for. This is the Akuma Samar. It has a bait feeder. What a bait feeder is, it's essentially a free spool. 
uh, that you can set the drag on. So it's like a secondary drag system that you can engage or disengage, you know, just with your either your finger or your palm here. What's really nice about that is if you're a live bait fisherman, which I mean, if I'm being honest, 75% of the fishing that we do uh, is gonna have some sort of live bait, whether it's uh, a wax worm um, or a meal worm, or you're gonna see like a minnow uh, or, or like a hot dog, right? You're gonna have some form yeah. of you know either live or real bait. Uh, this is really great because when you're dead sticking, uh, which means you're not actively jigging, mm -hmm. uh, you're just gonna drop your bait. You're gonna set. You're gonna engage and set your secondary drag so that it's basically just barely suspending your bait wherever you want it. When a fish takes it, it's just free spooling. The fish can't feel the hook in there, can't feel the tension from the line, but you're gonna be able to hear it either on, hear it from the drag or you're gonna be able to uh, watch the line unspooling uh, or you're gonna have some sort of indicator on your line. When you see that line start to go out, you just engage, just like Jeff did right there. You're gonna engage, like turn off the drag and engage your regular drag and now you're mm -hmm. fighting that fish, set the hook and mm -hmm. you're ready to go. Really cool uh, feature. $50 roughly uh, for the Samar, which is a great deal. Awesome reel, one of my favorites. Uh, 50 bucks for it without the bait feeder system. 80 bucks with, you really can't go wrong either way. Uh, I recommend if you're, again, live, live bait fishing or you're targeting larger species, Go with the bait feeder system. You'll be really happy with it, but you don't have to have it. So total preference. All right, so there's the medium light setup. Moving on to the heavier setups. Now, obviously you can go heavier than this. This is a medium. You can get medium heavies. You can get heavy sticks. Yeah, right? absolutely. So if you want to fish some really big fish, uh, like lake trout, for example, uh, you're going to want a bigger, heavier setup. And that's also where you're going to see guys get into the high 30 inch to the 40 foot. inch. Yeah you know, range of rod length. So this rod length uh, is only 26, just a little bit short for what I want to do with it, but it'll make do. But here we have the 13 fishing white noise. And as far as mediums go, this is one of the stiffest mediums yes. you're going to get. So this is a hyper stiff rod. Or medium uh, heavy. Yeah, or even a medium heavy. Like, so this is maybe more medium heavy than medium, but this is great for like those big fish. So if you actually want to go out and you want to target like jigging for pike, or for trout or something bigger, this can be a great option because it's gonna give you that fighting power. By the way, longer, better power. So I'd recommend going longer than what this one is. 32 plus is what my recommendation generally yeah. for this heavier setup, especially, and this is more for like deeper water fishing, right? Yep. Cause you're gonna need a stronger rod to sense something when you have that much line out. So if you like a hundred yards of line or a hundred feet of line out, you need a longer rod that's more stiff, uh, mm -hmm. more fast action to try and actually sense the bites when they're that deep down. So you're not going to be using an inline setup. In this case, we have a spinner. You're going to want a spinning yep. setup. You're going to want something a little longer uh, so that you can actually effectively hook set, feel what you're doing, and actually impart the action that you want on deeper water. And uh, this actually came off of one of my conventional setups, the one that I normally use for like Ned rigs. My finesse rig is what this came off of. So it does have yellow braid on it, but that's coming off before this goes in the ice. So just ignore the braid, but for the sake of argument, because I know somebody's going to be like, don't use yellow <laughs> braid on the ice, it's wrong. I don't know why you sound really old, but whatever. <laughs> anyway, so this is the Akuma ITX. It's just a really smooth reel, and it happens to be the only spinning reel I have that's like an appropriate size. It's so a 1,000 1, uh, for ice fishing. So again, what I'd recommend is like have a medium, have a stiffer combo that you can use for bigger fish if you want to go out and target them, or if you bycatch them, like you're ready for it, you can handle it. Go longer than this setup. That 32 plus that Paul was just referring to, but this makes a pretty solid combo. So if I want to use heavier lures, target bigger fish, like this is going to be that combo. Or deeper for us. water, yeah. Let's talk line real quick. Yep. So with your light ultralight, um, I'm usually going straight. I'm usually using ice fishing line, which is going to yeah. be like a fluorocarbon, ultra clear for that ultra clear water. So you're not mm -hmm. scaring the fish away or spook. They do get very spooky. Uh, they get really, really finicky mm -hmm. uh, in the ice or, or in, during ice fishing season. So I'm using that ice fishing specific line. Uh, usually it's going to be a 100% fluoro. I want probably two to four pound for the light ultralight. Yeah. As I get into that more like medium, medium lights, um, I want to see maybe. Again, it really depends on your fishing. So these are rules of thumb. I want to see maybe a four to six. Eight would be like the absolute most, but usually four to six pound test. Mm -hmm. uh, again, I'm using straight fluoro typically. You can now start getting into maybe, depending on the depth of water you're fishing, if you're fishing really deep, you can get into braided or braided with a leader. Uh, again, that's going to increase your sensitivity on deeper water situations. And once I get into the medium heavy, I'm pretty much going to, a, you can use straight fluoro, absolutely. But you're talking six to eight pound probably, if not 
lot higher, so yep. six to eight pound plus. And then you're getting into maybe a, a braided situation as well. I tip, I, I'm going to recommend white almost in every scenario for ice fishing. Uh, you'll see a lot of times like blue, uh, blue line. I do have a couple setups yep. with it. I typically don't use it, but a lot of people will say that like a blue or blue tinted line uh, can be even more invisible than the ultra clear. I tend to go with the ultra clear just because it's, I, I don't know, I just like it. I've never seen a difference, yep. um, but you do you. Try it out, see if you like it. But my recommendation, two to four pound test on the light ultralight, four to six in the medium, medium light, maybe eight at the absolute high end, and then four, or I would say eight plus pound test as you get to that uh, medium heavy medium. So if you wanted to have three go-to rigs plus a bonus rig, the Notice ultra the, ultra light the pinky goes out for the 15 inch <laughs> uh and have that like shorter ultra ultra light setup then these should be some good some good options for you guys yeah. and you know again like you don't have to go with these brands specifically but hopefully from this video you get an idea of like okay like ultra ultra light ultra light light medium medium light whatever like all those different options as far as uh action and power that you can go with and what specific purposes you could use that for when you get out on the hard water. So hopefully this video was helpful for you guys. If it was, of course, be sure to subscribe to the Aggressively Average Anglers channel and then come back on Wednesdays 8 p.m. when we go live every single week. And we're talking to cool people about cool stuff and things. Like ice fishing. Like ice fishing. Take care now. Bye bye then.